Okay, welcome. Well, in this short tutorial, I'm just going to cover some very basic uh, functions in Excel. Uh, we'll do a bit of math operations, we'll uh, do some data descriptive functions, average, count, median, things like that. I'll show you drag and drop and the anchoring of data, and we'll do some conditional formatting. So we'll start with these four, um, and, then, uh, and then we'll do the rest a bit later. So here's some sample data that I've gotten from, from class. Uh, we've got height in centimeters and forearm length in centimeters. And so one of the first things I want to highlight is how powerful and quick it is to do math operations in Excel. So for example, in this case, let's say I wanted to calculate the ratio of forearm four four arm length to height. Um, and when you're doing a function in Excel, you're writing it just the same way you would write it if you were writing it on a piece of paper. So in this case, I will do equal to uh, move the mouse over to click on the forearm, the cell that contains the forearm length, divided by the cell that contains the height, and hit enter. And that will automatically calculate it. Now if I go back and click on here in the function up there, I can see that it's grabbing the blue cell, dividing it by the red cell to get this value. And the way the cells are referred to is the column and then the row. So this is cell C2 divided by cell B2. Right? Now if I wanted to calculate the ratio again for this one, I could do the same. So equals to this cell divided by that cell return, but you're missing out on the powerful part of Excel, which is that it can do a lot of math quickly. And so what you can do is you can drop the cell to apply that same formula to all of the, the, color, the rows that follow. When you click on a cell, you'll see it's got this little square at the bottom. If I move my mouse over, it becomes this black plus. Click on that, left click, and then drag it down, all the way down to where you need it, and it'll automatically do the ratio, drag down the ratio uh, for all of the cells that you've highlighted. And I can check this, for example, here, click on there, and yes, it is indeed grabbing this cell divided by that cell. If I click on here, yep, it's grabbing this cell by that cell. So it's dragged all of that down. And that's called dragging and dropping. Um, so very powerful. Obviously, you can do a lot of math really quickly. Um, now, in terms of functions, so you've got your normal divided plus, uh, square root, things like that. But you also have some more advanced function in Excel. So in this case, I'm just going to plot down some descriptive statistics, things like the average, the standard deviation, uh, the sample size. Uh, what else could I put? Uh, the maximum, the minimum, the median. These are all good descriptive stats. And to do the formula, uh, I just go here, I type equal again, and then you type the name of the formula. So you, if you don't know it, you just click on this little formula, insert formula button, and you'll have a whole range of formulas that you can pick from mathematical, financial, statistical, etc. And in this case, I happen to know what the formula is called to do the average, and surprisingly, it's called average. So equals to average, open bracket of, and I highlight with my mouse all of the cells I want to do the average of, close bracket, and enter. And there it is. This is the average height of the students in this class. I can do the same for standard deviation. And the formula there is stdev equals to stdev of, and then I grab all my data, return. Same with sample size. Now for sample size, the function is actually called count. You're counting how many values you have. So equals of count of all of my data here. Max, it's called max, max of all my data. Min, it's called min, <laughs> surprisingly, min of all my data. And median is called median, so equals to median. And you see, as you start typing the equation, it starts providing you some of the available options. So in this case, there's only one function that starts with me, and it's median. So median of all of this. There, done, I've done, I've done, I've done a lot of math quite quickly. Now again, remember the drag and drop. So if I wanted to have the average of this column, I could again just retype equals to average of all of this. But I've already typed it. I've already typed it in this column. So what I can do is just drag it across. There we go. I can also just drag the whole thing across. 
and it will drag. I can check by moving over just to be sure. Yep, it's counted all of these cells. And here it's done the maximum of all of these numbers. So that you can see you can quickly do a lot of math really quickly. Um, now, one thing I do want to talk about is uh, validating data. So when you're entering data, sometimes you can make a mistake. And it's really useful to, to have a way of looking at your data. Uh, 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 humans are, are really good at noticing visual patterns. So looking at numbers can be a bit tricky. But there's a function called conditional formatting in Excel that allows you to convert uh, numbers to colors. So what I'll do here is I'll highlight all of these numbers here. And I'll go to conditional formatting up here in the home menu, conditional formatting, and then color scales. And I'll say grab this one. What it does is it assigns a red color to the highest number, a green color to the, the lowest number, and then a range throughout. When you do that, well, there's clearly a higher number here. 198 was the tallest student in the class. There's a few students, 194 and 59 was the shortest, but there's no, you know, it looks pretty evenly spread out. That's good. I'll do that again for forearm here. Additional formatting, data scale, path, and then immediately something clearly jumps up at me. There's a lot of green, a lot of yellow. There's nothing in the orange, nothing in the red. There's just this big red point here. And when I look at it a little closer, 245. Obviously, no one has a, a forearm that's 2.4 centimeter, 2.4 meters long. So this was a typo. Must have been a typo when I entered the data. I probably meant to type 24.5. So what I would do then is I'd go back to that student and ask him, hey, can you confirm your forearm was 24.5? Is that it? Let's say they say yes. I right, come back in, change that to 24.5, and see how automatically when I enter that value, the color changes again. And now I'm seeing a lot more spread of color. So this is much nicer uh, and clearly indicates that the data is evenly spread out. Um, so you can use this coloring to sort of pick out when you've made a mistake. Okay, that's it for this short tutorial, I think. Um, oh, I forgot the anchors, uh, the dollar anchors. Okay, so um, dollar anchors are useful if you want to fix a value so that when you're dragging down, uh, it's not dragging that particular value. Let's take an example here. Let's say I wanted conversion uh, factor. Let's say I wanted to enter, whoops, pardon me, conversion factor. Let's say I wanted to divide all of my heights by a value that I want to be able to enter it. Let's say, um, I mean, it would be easy. I could easily do heights in meters and just type equals to that divided by 100. And that would work just fine, right? But let's say I wanted to have a number I can easily change because I wanted one day I might want to do it in feet, for example, or something else. What I can then do is divide equals to that divided by this conversion factor here, right? And that obviously has worked for the first one, great. But, whoops, if I try to drag this, of course it's not going to work, because what it's doing is it's dragging this down, but it's also dragging this one down. You see, every time I drag it down, it drags it down by one fold. What I want to tell Excel is, actually, you know what? When I'm dragging this down, I don't want you to change that. You can change this one, but I don't want you to change this one. And so you do that by putting a dollar sign. So here's this value, J2, this cell J2. I put a dollar sign in front of J and 2. I'm fixing both the column as J and the row as 2. Enter. And now, when I drag it, there we go. When I drag it down, see it's not changing this cell. It's keeping this cell. It's basically anchored this cell. You can do it down here, there. Okay, so that is quick math, some descriptive stats, drag and drop, and the dollar function, and using conditional formatting for data validation.